Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily leak of problems. So today, it's actually a graph algorithm, and we're gonna use depth first search to solve it. So, oh, I don't wanna spoil it right away. So what we're given is a question called minimum score of a path between two cities, and it's a medium level question, and it's uh, fairly popular, but essentially what we wanna do is we are given a list of cities, so city one, two, three, and four, and we have a bunch of roads that kind of connect these cities, and they all have varying weights. And so here's a weight of seven, so to travel from city one to city four, it's a cost, I usually think of it, of seven. And to go from one to two, it's a cost of nine, two to three, six, and etc. And so what we want to do is come up with the minimum score and that's basically just, okay, what we want to do is we want to go from city one to city four, okay? And we start at city one, and we want to travel somehow to get to this particular city. And so the way we get the minimum score is these are kind of just points, I kind of think of it. And so you can grab nine here. If you go here, you can get six. If you go here, you can get five. And if you go here and you get seven. And the smallest number here is five in this case. And we basically want to cross this road to get this. And we wanna find the smallest number while still being able to get to this city. And so in that case, okay, Let's suppose that this is the smallest number. Let's put it to like negative three. And I think we can all agree that negative three is the smallest number here out of all of these uh, edges. And so although we can just get from one to four just like this, we're trying to get the minimum score, which is this value here. And so actually what we would do is we would travel from down to here and then down to here to get this negative three. And then we would just kind of go back however we want to get to four, okay? And so what you can understand here is that we don't really care about the path at which we get to the value four. We just care about, okay, let's go down as many different ways as we can from this value and find out what's the smallest edge that we encounter. Okay, and so we can do this using depth first search by just saying, okay, from the value one, what is the smallest edge that we can find from this value and then get to four from, okay? And so to do that, we're just simply gonna do a depth first search from one and just find what, what's the smallest value um, connected to it, or the smallest score connected to it. And now we know that four is always connected to one. So we, we don't really care about how we get to four. We can kind of go back and forth between nodes as many times and cross back and forth between edges as many times as we want. We know we're gonna get to four. So that problem's already solved. What the problem is really asking is, okay, what's the smallest edge that's connected to one? Okay, so we're just gonna use depth for search. Another solution for this that's actually more optimal uh, I just didn't have time to kind of prepare an explanation for that today, is using connected components. And I think it's fair to understand here that using an algorithm called connected components, just if you don't know it, just imagine what, by the meaning of the title, what it means, but just you just view kind of what you're connected to from the value of one. And using connected components, you can find a way to see that, okay, I am connected to this edge with a negative value of three, and I would return that. But in this case, we're just going to use depth first search and travel down every possible path and just see what the smallest value is. Okay, and so the solution for this is going to be a time complexity of O of n plus e, or I think a better is v. So this is the, oh, can't type here. This is the vertex, and this is the number of edges. And so this is space and time complexity. Okay, and it's the space complexity because we're gonna use depth per search recursively. Um, and that naturally takes up 
space in your application stack. You know, even if you were using an actual kind of physical stack, that would be taking up the same amount of space. And then time, so V stands for kind of the number of vertices. And in the worst case, we're going to travel to every single vertices. And the number of, the letter E represents the number of edges. So in the worst case, we're going to travel across every single edge. Okay? And so that's the time and space complexity, and let's write out our algorithm. So what we're going to do is define a depth first search function, and we're going to return the result of this function. And so before we do that, what we want to do is represent our graph, because we're going to be doing a depth first search on this graph that we're making up, and we're going to represent it using an adjacency list. Represent graph as adjacency list. All right, so we're going to use a collections dot default dictionary and it's going to default to a list just so that it's easier to create our adjacency list and not have any exceptions. And so we're going to iterate through for every uh, source and then destination and the corresponding weight associated with traveling from city A to city B is this particular weight. So this is coming from our roads array in roads. And then we're just going to kind of append to our adjacency list. So this source will be appended to, and we're going to use a tuple to represent the destination that you can get to from that source and the particular weight that's associated with that travel. And then we want to, because this is a uh, bi-directional traveling, right? There's no uh, direction to these edges. We're just going to say, okay, and naturally you can get from the destination to the source with the same weight. Okay, and so for our depth first search method, what we actually know is that we're always going to start from city one. And so we can set our initial node always to one. And what we want to be kind of propagating upwards is that minimum score that we're calculating. And initially we can just set that to infinity because we're trying to go from a very large number down to a small number. So let's just set it to a, a huge number here, which is infinity. Okay, and so now what we want to do is we'll want to iterate through our adjacency list and grab the neighbor and the corresponding weight in our roads array, or no, in our kind of graph that we made at that particular node that we're looking at. Okay, so this is just seeing, okay, from this particular city, where can we go, right? And so starting from city one, you can go to either two or four. And so from there, what we say is, okay, we want to say that our minimum score is equal to the minimum of itself and the weight associated with the city. Because the weight is really just another score that we're looking at, nine, seven, five, and six here. And so would we say if the minimum weight or minimum score right now was seven, when we look here, we say, okay, do we want to compare it with seven, five? Okay, let's update it to five. So let's get the weight from traveling to this neighboring node. And then next, what we do is, let's see, is we say, okay, if our neighbor has already been visited, let's just continue. And so we're not actually, often you see for depth first search, you might kind of pop after this, we're going to say, okay, um, visited.add neighbor. Often you see a pattern for depth first search is that you would after, afterwards remove this node because you want to calculate kind of the number of ways you can do it. It's kind of backtracking. But in this case, we don't want to remove it. We just want to keep saying, okay, we already visited this node. That way so that we don't just kind of go down this infinite loop of, okay, what if we go down four and then two and then kind of go back to four and then have to reprocess one. That's where you can get a, a TLE and just have this kind of infinite cycle of checking. And the reason why we don't want to backtrack is typically you want to backtrack when you want to calculate what's the number of ways I can get to a certain point. 
but we don't really care about that. We just want to see what is the smallest associated value, not, hey, what's the number of ways we can get to the destination of four? And so we will continue, but first let's create this visited set. Okay, and so now what we do is we say, okay, now that we know we have visited it, let's go ahead and visit it and update our min score to be equal to the minimum of itself and then the resulting depth first search on this node. And so we're looking at our neighbor now. We just pass in the current minimum score and naturally this is what we want to return at the end. Yep, so that looks like it's running well. And correct, but let's just take another deep dive here and see if I can explain anything else. So the reason why we want to check the minimum score here and update it, but then also update it here is because say if we visited one, and so now we update our visited set visited is equal to you know a set and we have one in it currently and so i'll just get rid of this because i'll be adding here and so we visit one and then our current min is seven and so we go down here and then say now from here we go down here and we now have visited four and we visited two and so now our min is five we want to still consider the minimum score when we travel from two to one, even though we've already visited one before, because there can be multiple weights kind of leading to one that are different, because this cat value could be like negative two, and we want to use that value. So if we didn't, if we do this, okay, if neighbor and visit continue before this statement, then we wouldn't be considering it when we go from two to one and not just from one to four. Okay, and that was my main catch there that I didn't um, quite understand is, okay, we wanna not just perform this check for the minimum when we're doing our depth first search, we also wanna be considering any values to neighboring nodes that we visited before, but they could have a different way to get there now. It's just, you really wanna have this visited set because naturally, after, say if one has all these nodes kind of connect, connecting to it down the stream, when we go from here to here, we still want to mark this as visited because the last thing we want is to go down this depth or down to this node and then kind of continue down all these nodes that we've kind of already traveled down. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, once again, this is number of vertices plus the number of edges. Common for graph algorithms to be kind of equal to that because in the worst case, we're going to visit every node and every edge connected to those nodes. So yeah, I hope this helped. Um, this isn't the most performance solution. Take a look at connected components if you have time, um, but this is usually more than enough to um, get passed on your lead code question. You know, we submitted it and it was correct to get passed on coding competitions. Usually it's fast enough and to get by for your interview round. So it's a, a great solution, but I always encourage you to check out an even better one. So yeah, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Have a great day.